What if I told you that The Legend of Zelda didn't originally launch first for the Famicom or the NES? Well, that would sort of be half true because it didn't originally launch first on either one of these consoles. It was actually a launch title for the Famicom Disk System. And believe it or not, it actually wasn't titled The Legend of Zelda. It was titled The Hyrule Fantasy. So what do you say? Let's take a trip down memory lane and take a look at the best selling video game console add-on of all time. And just exactly how pivotal this little device was to advancing the technology in the Nintendo Entertainment System that we in North America all came to know and love. And if you stick around, I'm gonna show you a console mod that I could almost guarantee you didn't know existed. So it all starts back in 1986 with this guy. This is the Nintendo Famicom. This is the Japanese equivalent to the NES. If you grew up playing video games outside of Japan, you're probably used to the Nintendo looking something like this. Well, much like everything else, Japan always got the cooler stuff. I mean, take a look at that thing. That is so much more compact and cooler looking. Maybe it's because I haven't been looking at one my entire life. So we go back to 1986, when Nintendo was still in the early stages of releasing games for the Famicom. Now, fun fact, those early Famicom games actually didn't have any type of memory in them, which means no saving your game, which is why Nintendo created this. This is the Famicom disk system. Just like all the other disk systems you're probably used to, your Famicom sat right on top of it, they plugged into each other, and this thing ran games on discs. Yes, very similar to a floppy disk, or some of you are going to call this a hard disk. That's Super Mario Brothers 2, and not the one that we got here in North America. This is the one that, here in North America, we know as Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. After Nintendo introduced the disc system to the Famicom, they partnered with Sharp. Sharp would then introduce an all-in-one system that they titled the Twin Famicom. This cool little console here is actually an all-in-one. It's a Famicom and a Famicom disc system. I actually thought these things looked really cool. I was always really jealous that they got the disc system and we didn't. But there's actually a really good reason why when Nintendo brought the console out west, the disc system didn't come with it. Let's dig in and talk about this. The whole purpose of Nintendo developing a disc system to begin with was multifaceted. The media was way cheaper. Secondly, the audio quality on these is far superior to a cartridge. And third, and most importantly, this media is writable. That's right, you could save stuff to this media. As I said earlier, unlike a video game cartridge at the time, there was no memory inside there. So there was no way to save your games or write any media to the cartridge. But with this, you could. And in 1986, Nintendo would introduce the world to a brand new little action adventure game called the Hyrule Fantasy. And it would launch exclusively on the Famicom Disk System. Now we know this game today as The Legend of Zelda. Let's talk about how it got from this to this. In 1986, Nintendo would release more than just a Hyrule Fantasy, they would also release a game called Metroid. And Metroid had saving functionality too. They both actually launched for the Famicom Disk System. And at the time of partnership, Sharp was killing it with these twin Famicom systems. There was actually three different models of the twin Famicom. I actually have all of them right here. Really the only difference is color. I always thought the green and gray one looked oddly like an Atari console. Personally, the red one is absolutely my favorite. If you're old enough to remember, in 1986, Nintendo started soft launching the Nintendo Entertainment Center here in North America and European regions. But during that soft launch, we didn't get Legend of Zelda. That was still a Famicom disc exclusive. And that was because Nintendo didn't have any plans on bringing the disc system to any territories other than Japan. Because by 1987, technology and cartridges had advanced so rapidly that they were starting to build memory with batteries into the cartridges. And so later that year, 
the Hyrule Fantasy would come to North America on cartridge as The Legend of Zelda. I don't know how many of you have ever played the disc version, but there are some subtle differences between this version of the game and the version that we got here in North America. One being the audio. I just played this the other day. It's noticeably different. And thus, in 1987, Nintendo started releasing cartridges to all territories that now had write functionality, which means you could save your game to the cartridge. There was no longer a need for the Famicom Disk System. But that didn't stop the momentum of the Famicom Disk System. Here's a fun little fact. Just by 1990, Nintendo had sold 4.4 million Famicom Disk System add-ons. And even though the final game for the Disk System was released in 1992, the software wasn't discontinued until 2003. And Nintendo didn't discontinue technical support for these things until 2003. And seven. So when you really look at those numbers, it's staggering and it's easy to see why this console add on became the best selling console add on of all time. If you want to argue that factoid, you should probably go look up what is considered a video game console add on. Not only was it the first home to the Legend of Zelda series, but it is the only home to the original North American. Super Mario Bros. 2, which was actually released on the disc system as Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. Some of you may already be familiar with this story, but when Japan released Super Mario Bros. 2, they took it to Nintendo of North America, and Nintendo in North America said, this is way too difficult for our audience, and it's way too similar to the first game. Don't we have something else that's just a little more different that we could release as Super Mario Bros. 2? So, the Super Mario Bros. 2 that we got here in North America is nothing like the Super Mario Bros. 2 that they got in Japan. Ours was actually a rebranding of Doki Doki Panic. And if you want to know what the original Super Mario Bros. 2 looks like, just hang out for a second, we're gonna boot this thing up and play it. Years later, Nintendo would acknowledge this and they would release the Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2 here in North America as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels and they would release the Super Mario Bros. 2 from North America in Japan as Super Mario USA. Even though they had already gotten a game called Doki Doki Panic, which when you play it on the disc system, is actually quite a bit better than the Super Mario Bros. 2 we got on a cartridge here in North America. The disc system got all kinds of cool games like Kid Icarus, Castlevania, and of course, Legend of Zelda 2. And all of these versions having substantially better audio than the stuff that we grew up playing. Another standout game for the disc system, not because it was a fantastic game, but because of its lineage, is Famicom Grand Prix 2, or 3D Hot Rally. Now, as you can see, this was sort of a racer featuring our plumber friends, Mario and Luigi. Actually, Mario and Luigi were not featured in the game at all. They were just featured on the artwork of the game. Again, while Nintendo of America didn't find this game good enough to release in our territory, the development and the design of this game certainly led to games like F-Zero and Mario Kart just one generation later on a Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. And now I'm sure one of the things a lot of you have been sticking around for, let's talk about mods for this beautiful little console. If you have ever tried to buy a twin Famicom or you own one, you know that the disk drives fail. Much like an old floppy drive or even some of the old CD-ROM drives, these are driven with a rubber belt and rubber over time gets old and it breaks. Luckily, we have quite a few that still work, but this one had kicked the bucket. Dr. Mod opened it up, he put a new belt in there, and even some new caps, but unfortunately, this thing still doesn't want to read discs. So it got Dr. Mod thinking and doing a little bit of research. That's when he came across this little beauty. And what is this? Let's take a look. If you flip the console over, there's a little port back here. This little port here is actually what connects the two different consoles together. You have your Famicom on one side and your disk system on the other. Well, if you just unplug 
the disk system side, take this beautiful looking thing and plug it in in its place, you now have a dongle. And in this dongle is an SD card. You want to take a guess what's on the SD card? Yeah, that's right. Every single Famicom disk game that was ever released. And it has its own little LCD screen to help you navigate what games you're playing. So let's plug this thing in and check it out. This thing functions just like a Nintendo would. It plugs right into your TV with a power adapter. From there, we just turn on the console and pull up this wonderful little FDS key. On this FDS key, you see there's a little screen. It'll tell you what game you're playing. I know, you guys all want to see Doki Doki Panic. So let's check that out. Boom, there we go. It plays from this little dongle, just like the disc has been inserted. And just for fun, let's check out just a second of Doki Doki Panic so you can see just how similar the two games were. Does this level look familiar? Did these noises and this music sound familiar? I'll bet they're much better quality. If you ever get a chance to play Doki Doki Panic, I highly suggest it. I'm sure there are plenty of ROMs out there. Now, the one last thing I did want to share about the disc system, all the really cool accessories that Nintendo released during the lifespan of this thing. This soft carry case I thought was really, really cool. And stuff like this comes really cheap online when you can find it. It opens up and it could hold five of your favorite disc system games. Nintendo even released some of these really cool carrying cases I don't know if you guys used to play with floppies like I did, but it was a lot like the old floppy disk cases that we used to keep next to our computers back in the day. The other really neat feature of the twin Famicom was Controller 2 had a microphone on it, which was actually usable in some of the games that were released for the disk system. Clean up in aisle six. I highly suggest going online and finding yourself one. They're actually not expensive. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the stuff in my collections, while it is weird and rare, there's really not a huge monetary value to a lot of it. You can actually buy one of these consoles working for under a hundred bucks if you know the right places to look. And you could buy one for even cheaper not working and get this mod that will allow you to play all of the games. And I know what you're saying. Why not just download all the ROMs and play them on an emulator? You could totally do that too. But if you watch my videos, you know how much of an advocate I am for playing games on their native hardware. It is always going to be the best experience. So if you like console modifications like this, you should check out my console mod video on the PlayStation 3 right here. And if you don't want to miss out on more videos like this in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel right here. And until next time, enjoy the journey.